Hi everyone, uh, glad to be here today. My name is Cole Scheller. I'm the lead strength and conditioning coach for your Manitoba Bisons. And uh, I'm here to help you guys get an understanding of the kind of things our athletes have been doing at home to get ready for upcoming competitive seasons. So when we think of athletes, there's a couple of things that we need our athletes to be able to do. In particular, we want them to be fast, we want them to be powerful, and we want them to be strong. So today, we're gonna to go over a couple of things that our athletes have been doing at home with no equipment to make sure that they check those three boxes coming into our next competitive season. So if we want our athletes to be fast, powerful, and strong, today we're gonna to go over a couple of the things that we would like you to be able to do to make sure you're doing those things. We're gonna do a quick warm up. We're gonna do some track and field type drills. We're gonna work on a little bit of power drills and we'll finish with some strength. So before we start training and working out, it's important to get a good warm up in. One of the best ways to do that is to start with five or 10 minutes of just general activity. This could be walking, light jogging, riding a bike, an elliptical, rowing, whatever you fancy. After that, there's a couple demos of some exercises that we like to do with our athletes to make sure that their entire body is primed and ready to go. So for this first drill, we're gonna focus on our ability to stay tall at the hip, look forward in a neutral head position, and strike the ground at the middle of our foot. We're gonna call this drill ace switches. So what Kat is doing in this drill is standing as tall as she can. She's bringing her knee up, making sure her foot is right underneath it with the bottom of her foot parallel to the ground. As she's holding her posture, she's worrying about striking the ground as hard as she can with the middle of her foot without leaning forwards or backwards or lowering herself at the hip. The easiest version of this drill is one single switch at a time with your feet low to the ground. To progress it from there, you would bring the bottom of your foot higher and higher. So maybe starting about ankle height for the first progression, the middle of your calf for the second progression, and about as high as you can go for the third. To add levels of difficulty to this, instead of a single switch, we would do a double switch with the same height progressions or a triple switch with the same height progressions. The second drill that Kat is demonstrating is called a dorsiflexion hop. The point of this drill is to make sure that we have strong, stiff, healthy ankles and calves as we're running and jumping. The idea behind this drill is that the cat is staying as tall as she can and jumping up and down on the middle of her foot. Her goal is to spend as little time on the ground as possible each time her feet hit the ground. Imagine you're jumping on a pogo stick, that's what you're trying to get accomplished. In order to progress this drill, we would start with our feet pointed forwards, we would do a few with our feet pointed in, a few with our feet pointed out, and once you get good at it, worry about doing it one leg at a time. The third drill is an on-the-spot acceleration run. What Kat is doing is starting, running slowly on the spot with her feet low to the ground while still maintaining the posture that she worked on developing during the switch drills. As time goes on and she progresses the drill, she's worrying about having her feet move faster and bringing her feet higher off the ground. Some great power development exercises for athletes are jumping drills. So here's a couple examples of some vertical and horizontal jumping drills we would do with our athletes. 
The first progression of this is called a non-counter movement jump, where you get to the bottom of your jump position and hold for a couple of seconds before you jump as hard as you can. The second progression is called a counter movement jump, where you dip down to the depth of your jump and explode out of it as soon as you get to the bottom. The third version would be a double contact jump, where you tap your feet on the ground right before you get to the bottom position of your jump and explode out of it as quickly as you can. The fourth progression of this would be continuous jumps, where you work on stringing several consecutive jumps together. The things that you want to focus on when you're doing these things is making sure that your feet stay underneath your hips, making sure that your chest is pointed up and at the wall across the room from you, that when you land, your knees don't cave in, and then when you do land, you're landing on the middle of your foot. So the next drill we're gonna talk about are drop squats. You might think that jumping is all about getting off the ground as high as you can, but the reality is what comes up must come down. And if you aren't very good at landing, it's gonna be very, very difficult for you to put a lot of force into the ground and jump really high. So these drop squat drills are chosen specifically to work on landing and landing mechanics. For the bilateral drop squat, Kynan is starting on his tiptoes and then he's falling down to the ground as fast as he can, trying to land with his weight on the middle of his feet, with his chest up and without his knees caving in. As you get better at this drill, try and control the depth of your drop and catch so that your knees are more bent and your hips are closer to the ground when you land. Once you get good at the bilateral or two-legged drop squat, you can add some challenge by trying to do it unilaterally on one leg at a time. These next push-up variations are chosen because they make sure that our athletes, athletes stay explosive in the upper body. The first version is going to be called a hand-release push-up throw, where Kynan is starting laying flat on the ground and trying to throw his entire body weight off the ground as quickly as he can. It's okay to do this from a straight leg or bent knee position, depending on how strong you are in the upper body. The next variation of push-up drill is called a push-up drop and catch. Very similar to the drop squats that we just talked about, what you're trying to do is fall rapidly to the ground and catch yourself in a static position, making sure that you're stable and your core is tight when your hands hit the ground. For the strength work that we ask our athletes to do, we do a fair amount of isometric training to promote tendon and joint health. Isometric training works best in the specific range of motion that the isometric is held for, and that is why we do different positions for each of these drills. The first isometric drill is going to be different positions of a squat hold. As you can see, Liam is starting his squat hold at about a quarter squat position, weight equally distributed on the middle of his foot, and his chest is up. After he's held this for some time, the next progression is to bend your knees to about 90 degrees of flexion. After you've held that position for some time, the final progression for this drill would be to bend your knees all the way and get your hips as close to the ground as you possibly can while your whole foot is touching the floor. In addition to the bilateral squat pattern, it's important for our athletes to be strong on one leg. And so doing the same isometric progressions as the squat in a split squat progression will help make sure that our athletes are strong unilaterally. Similar to the squat and split squat progressions, you can apply this isometric principle to push-ups. In this example, Liam has started with a full extended arm position, translating to a 90 degree elbow position, followed by hovering just off the ground as close as he can without falling. Just like the push-up throw and push-up catch drill, it's okay to do this drill from a kneeling position if you don't have the upper body strength to do it with straight legs. This last drill is a hamstring plank position. When Liam is doing this, he's gonna start with his legs almost completely straight, trying to pull his toes up to his knees. What he's gonna do is drive his heels into the ground to make sure that his hips are off the ground completely and the only points of contact with the ground are gonna be the back of his shoulders and his heels. He's gonna start with his legs almost as straight as he can get them and after some time, he's going to bend his knees a bit and hold that position. Lastly, he's gonna finish by bringing his heels as close to his hips as he can and driving his hips as high and close to the roof as possible. 